God, it's good to worship in the house of the Lord, is it not? Amen. 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 Well, you notice I don't have my computer. <laughs> I think it finally died. <laughs> but I have my iPad, and once I learn how to use it, I'll be using that next week, God willing. So, old style, old style. Well, again, the message today is called Roe is Dead, but Abortion is Still Alive and Well. On Friday evening, I had finished my sermon for Acts, and I was so happy. It's just a labor, it's a labor of love. And I was like, oh, I got out of here about 10. And then I woke up in the morning and I thought, no, I, I have to preach a message on Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. I've done this for the past seven years. And God just wouldn't let me let it go. And I'm like, no, we'll pray and we'll talk about it. But he wouldn't let it go. And it just nagged me, nagged me. Finally, I got in the office yesterday go, darn, I got to come up with another sermon. <laughs> so I'm ready for next week, though. But I'm very glad that we're able, that God spoke to me in this way and I'm able to speak about this today. So again, Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. We honor this every year. If you're not familiar with the special day, perhaps it's new to you. Sanctity of Human Life Sunday is held on the third Sunday of January and was startled, started by Ronald Reagan in 1984. This is part of what he said when he established it. The values and freedoms we cherish as Americans rest on our fundamental commitment to the sanctity of human life. The first of the unalienable rights affirmed by our Declaration of Independence is the right to life itself, a right the Declaration states, has been endowed by our Creator on all human beings, whether young or old, weak or strong, healthy or handicapped. We have been given the precious gift of human life, made more precious still by our births in or pilgrimages to a land of freedom. It is fitting then on the anniversary of the Supreme Court decision in Roe v. Wade that struck down state anti-abortion laws that we reflect anew on these blessings and on our corresponding responsibility to guard with care the lives and freedoms of even the weakest of our fellow human beings. Amen? H.W. Bush continued it during his presidency. Bill Clinton discontinued it for the eight years he was in office. George W. Bush reinstituted it for his two terms, but Barack Obama eliminated it when he was elected. President Trump brought it back again during his four-year term, but the current administration killed it, saying that they are committed to codifying Roe v. Wade and appointing judges that respect foundational precedents like Roe. Today would have marked 50 years since the U.S. Supreme Court's 7-2 decision, a disastrous decision, a non-constitutional decision, a decision that was born out of whole cloth called Roe versus Wade, which legalized the killing of unborn children nationally. If you're not familiar with the case that changed abortion law in America, it's this. Norma McCorvey, a.k.a. Jane Roe, sued the state of Texas to obtain the right to an abortion since it was illegal if the mother's life wasn't threatened. Nearly 64 million babies have perished since that decision in 1973. What does 64 million people look like? It's nearly the population of France. It would take almost 5,000 football fields to give each of these children a proper burial. That's 14.5 14 14 million more than attended public school in 2021. Abortion has eliminated about 18% of the U.S. population. Let's compare American infant deaths by abortion to dictators who kill, killed their own people. Chairman Mao Zedong killed at least 40 million people when he led China in the Cultural Revolution. Genghis Khan in the early 13th century eliminated 40 million people. And Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin is responsible for 20 million deaths in the USSR during his reign of terror. He said this, when one person dies, it's a tragedy, but when a million people die, 
It's a statistic. Sadly, I'm afraid many of us, Christians and not alike, have hardened our hearts to the fact of what a million, what 10 million, what 64 million babies dead looks like. By the way, abortion was the leading cause of death worldwide in 2022. On Friday, the Washington, D.C. March for Life had tens of thousands, as I mentioned, and they were celebrating the greatest news ever on what would have been its 50th anniversary, no more. Roe v. Wade is no more. All those prayers and protests and vigils and votes and marches and tears had finally paid off. No longer do women have a national right to kill their unborn child. Yes, Roe is dead, but abortion is still alive and well. This is why we still commemorate Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, because there are only nine states where abortion is completely illegal. Those are the states in black. All the rest have various laws, 15 weeks, 18 weeks, 20 weeks, where you can still kill a baby. The fight for life continues. I'm hoping to spur you on to love and good works no matter what phase of life you are in. Whether young and energetic, whether middle-aged, raising a family and too busy, whether you're reaching your golden age and you're slowing down, or whether you're retired and you're slowed down completely. The entire Bible is filled with God's commitment to the fatherless and the widow, and regardless of what phase of life we are in, we need to be committed to that as well. He commands believers to commit to these things. Isaiah 117, learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. God expresses great anger at the shedding of innocent blood. Proverbs 6, there are six things the Lord hates. No, seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent. Genesis 9, 6, whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed, for God made man in his own image. We are a nation of murderers. We have, we have sanctified and legalized murder of the weakest among us. The very fact that we even have a day dedicated to the sanctity, the preciousness of human life shows how far we have fallen as a culture. People say, God bless America. It's an empty phrase because God can't bless a nation that kills 64 million of its own. In fact, if you read Romans, it says we are a nation under judgment. We can pray, God, save America. God, cause America to repent. God, please bring a revival. But we're a nation under judgment. How do I know? Look at the laws and look at the culture that we live in now. Does it look like a culture that God is blessing? When men can be women and women can be men? Homosexual marriage is sanctioned and pride. It's not pride day or month anymore. It's like pride year. Pride. When a nation celebrates pride of any kind, we know that what God says is what? Pride comes before a? God, save America. In fact, I hate Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. I don't hate it because I think it's inappropriate. No, just as every Lord's Day should be Easter, with the preaching of the resurrection of Jesus and Christmas with the announcement of God becoming man. So we need to constantly affirm the dignity and preciousness of human life. The main reason I hate this day is that I'm reminded that we have to say things to one another that human beings should never have to say. Mothers shouldn't kill their children. Fathers shouldn't abandon their babies. No human life is worthless regardless of skin, color, age, disability, or economic status. Pastor John Piper said, use your imagination to see what abortion really is. 
Fight against the social stupor that gripped Nazi Germany. The feeling that the problem is so huge and so horrendous and so out of control that I just can't be wrong to let it be. Use your imagination to see and feel what is happening behind those cold, sterile doors. If you could see each little handiwork of God and what it looks like when it is being crushed or poisoned or starved, you would say, this can't be happening. Civilized people do not do this. The children will not be saved and God's work will not be reverenced without an act of sustained, sympathetic imagination. Otherwise, it is out of sight, out of mind, just like Dachau, Buchenwald, and Auschwitz. It just couldn't be happening, and so we act as if it isn't. How is it that the human heart can be so calloused and so immune to the horror of the 21st century's greatest holocaust? Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things. The way I have it memorized is, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can understand it? Dr. Henry Morgenthaler survived the Holocaust while suffering through the torments of Dachau. He saw firsthand and experienced firsthand the horrors of hardened hearts as he witnessed those he loved and cherished being led away to the gas chambers and crematoriums. He was there. He was a victim. You'd think when he got out that he would become the greatest of pro-life proponents. No. After the war, he moved to Canada, became an abortionist, and gained fame killing babies. Another irony, in 2008, Henry Morgenthaler was awarded the Order of Canada saying that he had been selected for, get this, his commitment to increased health care, options for women, his determined efforts to influence Canadian public policy, and his leadership in humanist and civil liberties organizations. We are living in the same type of evil age as the prophet Isaiah, who said this, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. Does that sound like us? Everything is topsy-turvy now. Now Christians are the bad guys. Christians are the intolerant ones. Christians are the ones who will be victimized next. How dark is the human heart? How has light been replaced with that darkness? Mary Elizabeth Williams wrote an article entitled, So What If Abortion Ends a Life? She wrote, Here's the complicated reality in which we live. All life is not equal. That's a difficult thing for liberals like me to talk about, lest we wind up looking like death panel loving, kill your grandma and your precious baby stormtroopers. Yet a fetus can be a human life without having the same rights as the woman in whose body it resides. She's the boss. Her life and what is right for her circumstances and her health should automatically trump the rights of the non-autonomous entity inside of her, always. Did you get that? Not a baby, not a human. It's a non-autonomous entity who has no rights. Here are some images of non-autonomous entities from the DC March for Life. These pro-life men and men are wearing name badges that say, clump of cells. I love it. I love it. The very fact that these uncomfortable things, these unpleasant atrocities must be spoken is a reminder of the horrors of this present darkness. Why must we still fight? Because even though Roe is dead, abortion is still alive and well, even in Texas. Post-Roe laws still protect the right of mothers to kill their own pre-born children, even in states with bans like ours. 
Look at this exemption that is written directly into the homicide code. Take a look at this. Texas Penal Code 19.06, criminal homicide. This chapter does not apply to the death of an unborn child of the conduct, char if the conduct is charged, conduct committed by the mother of the unborn child. You see that exception? It's not murder if the conduct committed by the mother of the unborn child, if she kills her baby, it's not murder. Even in states like Texas that are supposedly abortion-free, mothers can still legally abort their babies by doing self-induced medication abortions at home. Medication abortion has been rising in popularity in recent years and has already accounted for more than 50% of reported abortions in the U.S. even before Roe was overturned. But in 2023... Medical practitioners are no longer needed to perform medication abortions. Did you know that? Abortion pills are easy to get shipped directly to your doorstep in all 50 states, including Texas, and women are doing it. I recommend you all see another movie. It's called Unplanned. It's Abby Johnson's testimony. And there's a graphic scene in there where she takes one of these abortion pills. And that's all I'll say. It's not harmless. It's not safe. Maybe legal. Not only that, but Rite Aid, Walgreens, and CVS will now sell them over the counter. I'm not one to call for boycotts, but I'm even willing to hold the sign out of the CVS because they're now sanctioning killing babies when you go buy your ice cream. This type of abortion isn't back alley because it's not illegal. Women don't have to sneak around the law because the law protects their behavior. More and more women are carrying out their abortions at home on their own terms. The reported numbers might say abortions in Texas have plummeted by 99%, but it isn't true. It isn't true. But that is what the media promotes, and that's what the government in Texas promotes. But just giving these statistics and facts shows you it cannot be true has not plummeted 99% it'll plummet that much when it's actually illegal in every facet since the states now decide whether they will allow abortions it's not at all clear that even pro-life states will ban them in Kansas a statewide pro-life ballot initiative went down in flames and Kansas is a red state in Montana, another red state, a bill that would have merely required helping babies born alive after a botched abortion procedure failed. So a baby who is still alive, the doctors are not legally required to save it. That's infanticide. Even when a conservative state can't be bothered to restrict personal freedom to preserve the life of a baby outside of the womb, why would we expect pro-life success anywhere else? That's why we continue to pray, right? Michigan passed the most radical pro-abortion law that America has ever seen. Look it up. Roe is dead, but abortion is still alive and well. Don't count on our present government to help the cause either. There have been attacks on 78 pro-life groups and 180 eight churches since the leak of the overturning of the Roe v. Wade decision. And I'm sure you've already heard They've stopped investigating the leak. And I figured out why this morning. It turns out a lot of these assistants to the judges were going home and telling their spouses. So how are they going to prosecute all these people? They've been sharing it with, with their wives and their husbands what happened. That's probably why. They realize it's, it's just blatant. Guess what? With all those 78 pro-life groups and 108 churches being attacked, there have been zero FBI investigations. A resolution to condemn the attacks was not even acknowledged by one political party. Yet, 
26 pro-life individuals were charged with violations of the FACE Act. That's the freedom of access to clinic entrances for refusing to leave abortion facilities where they quietly prayed and protested. And as I said, a couple of those people are my friends. One of them, Dennis Green, has like nine kids. And he was busted for praying. You know what they're doing in the UK, right? You know what they're doing in England? They've arrested two people for praying outside an abortion clinic without saying a word. The, the, the bobbies, or whatever they're called, came up to them and said, are you praying against abortion? And because they're Christian and they can't lie, they say yes. And they arrested him for just thinking. That's called thought police. And they were simply doing what the Bible says to do. Psalm 82, defend the weak and the fatherless, uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed, rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. All across America, we have laws that protect our lives from homicide, but we deny those same protections to pre-born children. The Bible calls it partiality. When some people receive preferential treatment over others, God says he hates partiality and judgment, and we should too. God says that those who pervert the justice due to the fatherless are cursed. Every state is perverting the justice due to the fatherless by denying precious children the equal protection of the laws what are we doing to change that? What are you doing to change that? David asks in Psalm 11.3, when the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? Well, the Colson Center offers three ways to rebuild our foundations. Number one, promote the truth that the image of God is the only basis for human dignity and value. The loss of our understanding of who we are as human beings leaves only some vague notion of autonomy and self-expression for grounding our existence. Christians must stop hiding their light under a bushel basket and speak of him. Again, that's why I'm going through Acts. And I get frustrated because, man, it just seems like we leave one week and come back and you hear another message, but no one is still going out there and sharing their faith. Take the cause of life and the cause of God the God who saved you seriously. Number two, the defense of truth is essential to understanding reality. Our culture primarily believes there is no universal absolute truth. You know that, right? So whatever you believe is okay. Whatever you believe is okay. Hey, feels good, do it. Your truth. Or how about this one? There is no absolute truth. You know what you say to them? Are you making an absolute statement? There are a million and one claims of being personally pro-life that lead to a million and two rationalizations for taking pre-born lives. Unless people have a clear sense that some things like abortion are just wrong, long-term moral progress on the issue will be nearly impossible. Let me ask you, are you willing to lovingly argue for the absolute truth of the word of God. Do you even know it? It's more than just reading a daily devotional. It's more than reading a proverb. It's reading his word, and it's more than just reading his word. You've got to learn and understand his word. One of my favorite lunch meetings every week is my lunch meeting with Paul Axtell. Why? Because we talk about the word of God. I love it. The poor guy, he only gets to talk to dogs and cats and farm animals. <laughs> I'm thankful I have a friend like Paul that we can talk about these things. Lastly, the number three, the third foundation is promoting marriage as the best situation for the care and protection of children. Promoting marriage. You know, marriage is out of style now, right? The more that fatherless and husbandless homes become the norm, the more preborn children will be at risk and their deaths accepted as convenient. Roe is dead, but abortion is still alive and well, and so is God and his people, though. 
God's people are still alive and well, just like God. So let's press on by continuing to pray for the end of abortion. We're going to continue to do that. I'm going to do that in my pastoral prayers, along with my prayers for the persecuted church. We're going to continue to support pro-life pregnancy centers like the Marble Falls one we've been doing for seven years, eight years. They're doing a great work. Stennis Schatz is a wonderful CEO, and he used to be the vice president of national sales for Coke, and he retired in devoting his life to running that pregnancy resource center. We'll continue to vote our pro-life convictions. And I'm hoping that we'll take action, like marching in the rally for life in Austin next week. It's a small step, but you show support to others who are like-minded, and you will be encouraged. It's just an hour commute each way. Yeah, it's Austin, I know, but this is a good reason to go. Let's pray. Lord God, the message is heavy because the subject is heavy. As much as we can celebrate the end of Roe v. Wade, <laughs> the work has just begun. I hope that none of us will rest on our laurels because nothing has really changed except the decision goes back to the states. And the way that it's going now with the states is that people who are so overwhelmingly anti-Christian or non-Christian are voting what's convenient. And Lord, we can delude ourselves even in Texas to believe that abortion is down 